Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Lift your hands, lift your voice and declare. Declare before him. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. Fountain of wisdom. All I need is you. The awesome one, the mighty one. All I need is you, is you, is you, All I need is you. The part I really want you to sing is that part that says you owe the universe. Can you sing that part? That's what I want you to hear. You have the universe. choose to believe you we are men and women who have chosen to trust you we believe you we believe your ways we believe your truth we are not rebels we will not argue with your truth your word is infallible it's been tested too many times to be doubted Lord tonight we align our hearts to your truth the truth that make us free and the truth that can lift us up. We declare in the name of Jesus that that word that upholds all things will uphold our lives. Lord, tonight we submit our hearts to your wisdom. We declare our need for wisdom. We declare our need for wisdom. And Lord, we crave for it. We cry for it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we sit down, it never gets too much to pray. I just like you to pray just one prayer and say, Lord, I crave for your wisdom. I, I reckon that I need more of your wisdom and I crave for it. Like a man seeks for silver, like a man seeks for gold. I crave for your wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing the Bible says. Therefore, get wisdom. It says, with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring an ornament of glory, a crown shall she deliver unto thee. When thou dost embrace her. Hallelujah. 
Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. I never marvel, stop marveling at the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God can turn any man who believes it and walks in that reality into a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. And I sincerely believe with all my heart that that is why we are here. I come here because I recognize my need for wisdom. I recognize that it is only in his presence and only when his word is accurately communicated. The principles of the word are accurately communicated, not the information. The information has no power to produce change. You see, let me tell you something. When people do not have faith, it is not because they do not believe God. There is a level of accuracy with which the word of God was designed to be communicated. And if that word is communicated properly, there is a spiritual logic to it that becomes the basis upon which the faith of the people are grounded. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, he says, but in the demonstration of power that your faith will not be grounded upon the wisdom of men, Sophia, wisdom that is a product of education, experience, that is limited, suggestions of men, opinions that were based on a very short view. But the Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It never said it's settled in the earth, it's settled in heaven. It takes doing what heaven has done to make the word settle in our lives. In the name of Jesus. So I welcome everyone. Thank you for coming as always. Those following us online and thousands of people. We love you, we honor you. Let your hearts be open, let your spirits be open. For those coming here for the first time, this is Koinonia. And we're on a series, Thrive Part 2. T-H-R-I-V-E. This is part two. The series is an attempt to concretize upon our hearts some of the keys that are required for transgenerational relevance. Some of the keys that are required for rising above the vicissitudes of life. Like I said last week, um, it will be irresponsible to pretend that the economic turmoil, the hardship and all of the things that people are going through uh, it's not telling on people you cannot imagine the stories that have emerged as a result of people's frustration whenever a people are limited in any way it will only take time they will react and oftentimes they will react based on the informations that they have so they will use violence, they would um do a lot of very stupid things. I've heard of people walking naked for money. I've heard of people giving their children for all kinds of immoral things for money. I've heard of people doing all sorts of things. And, and the truth about it is that except you are shielded with revelation, um, you will really feel the gravity of what is happening. Institutions are lamenting. Churches are lamenting. Social organizations, businesses lamenting. The government itself is lamenting and that means that we have to source for light and life from another dimension another reality that is beyond the scope of the human experience amen and i started sharing with us last week how that it is possible to rise above these things i love the song that the worship team communicated there is victory listen listen there is no experience of anyone, regardless of what the peculiar experience is, that is worthy enough to disprove the power, the integrity, the glory, and the efficacy of the person and the word of God. Are we together? If I die today of sickness, my dying of sickness will raise a lot of questions among those who love me, those connected to this vision, and several people across the world. But it does not change the fact that God is mighty 
and it is within his power to heal. Are we together? If you really want to receive from God, you must desist from isolating your singular experience and using it as a template to judge everything the Bible says about God. Because our experiences are limited. The Bible says that we see in part, 1 Corinthians 13, we see in part, therefore we prophesy. Our communications and that which we do is according to our perspectives. This is why I, I seek him as a matter of life and death. Let it not be that I'm holding on to a perspective that after many years of being convicted by it, and leading others to be convicted by it, I discover that I have lived in error and have communicated the same to people. The Bible says that we be careful so that what we call light be not darkness. After many years of a man's life, you can discover that the very foundation upon which your convictions are built upon is wrong, inaccurate, imbalanced. Are we together? So when we come before his presence, our hearts must be opened. You don't come to God with an opinion, hoping that he agrees with you. When you come to him, your heart is absolutely open. You say, Lord, I am aware of my vulnerability. I'm a product of culture. I'm a product of genetic programming. I'm a product of environmental conditioning. And many of the realities that I've held as true, though popular, though spiritual, may not be consistent with your path so i come to you with every open-heartedness trusting that you will build you will tear down you will rearrange and bring order to my life and that's what god is doing in the name of jesus every time you see consistent results in the life of a man in the life of a people in the life of a territory it is because there is something that is done correctly whether or not the practitioners are aware of the dynamics of what they are doing are we together whether or not the individuals can explain in detail what they are doing or not the moment you see consistent results regardless of limitations there are laws there are principles that are being practiced are we together and uh, i'm going to take it from there i shared with us a few things four points in all we took two i would begin to take from um, where we left off last week and then we'll continue number one i told us that the key to rising above the vicissitudes of life rising above the challenges and the things that hold men crippled spiritually economically and so on and so forth the first key is a genuine encounter with jesus christ the first key to becoming relevant is not being educated. The first key to becoming relevant is not having business acumen. It's not even being a leader. Are we together? It's not, it's not any of these things. Success and any kind of impact, a life of notable impact starts from the health and the quality of a man's spiritual life. Say amen. The measure of your impact through God in the kingdom is directly associated with the genuineness of your hunger the sincerity of your love for god while we're away on administration in the course of the week i met a man of god who was at the meeting and he just came to see me and talk to me and um you know god did great things and honored himself in the meeting and the man sat down and he began to weep like a baby and he said sir what is the secret I don't know how many times people have asked this what is the secret and i kept looking at him and i said sir i can bet that you might be disappointed if i tell you i wish the secret were just fasting and prayer i wish the secret were just the quality of my word study life i wish the secret were just that i was anointed as important as those things are i told him if you want me to be sincere with you and you have the heart to receive the secret to the dimensions that by the grace of God I've been able to access are we together is tied primarily to my passion for God and my sincere desire to see him glorified my passion for God 
and my sincere desire to see him glorified you've heard me say it and god knows my heart i love god more than ministry i love god more than money i love god more than anointing i don't use him for these things never have and never will i rather give up ministry a thousand times to remain in his presence and to remain in love with him i even love him more than the quest for his presence this is where i believe many people miss it because primarily our motives are corrupted god for us means many things for other people he's just a solution like a charm like a genie that you use and invoke his name invoke his blood invoke his fire invoke whatever to get results you're not going to really host extraordinary results that way are we together a genuine encounter with jesus that births the fear of god in you that births love for god and love for humanity it's not enough to love god you must love the people he has sent to you and you must love the body i love the body of christ with all my heart i am part of it i'm proud to be part of it i love the body of christ i may not agree with every perspective in the body of christ i may not hold as part of my conviction every opinion and perspective but it's, it's too little a reason to not love the body of christ i love the body of christ regardless of man of god regardless of denomination regardless of exploits or setbacks i genuinely love the body of christ now let me tell you when you get to this spiritual state when you can assume this posture you are ready to host the grace for transgenerational relevance not outside of this condition the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it come into the heart of any man that which god has in store not for them that pray not for them that seek him for them that love him when a man truly falls in love with god and is addicted with his presence his life everything about god becomes an obsession to you his house his life his word everything your whole life is poured as a drink offering then you are ready to rise above any challenge i'm telling you challenges will come upon you you will rise and shake them off as if they do not exist believe me i know what i'm saying are we together so we discussed that and i said how that many believers they may be born again but they've not had a genuine encounter with jesus an encounter that is greater than any circumstance you know when people doubt god and turn and insult god to his face over situations and circumstances lord i pray for for tea you didn't give me tea i prayed for bread you didn't give me bread i prayed for cgpa i prayed for a job you are not faithful and um, you know god if you don't do this i will backslide is because you've not had an encounter the remedy for that kind of talk is just an encounter it's not counseling the remedy is an encounter there is a way that a man encounters god that you owe him your allegiance regardless of what happens around your life are we together it's very important whether you bless me or not i'm in love with you to a point of addiction whether ministry rises or not it has no it it, it it does not contribute in any way to influencing my love and my appetite for you please i pray that as you listen to me this will become a reality that this will not just become a talk from a preacher you see when you are pretending certain things in the kingdom it will only take time time does not change anything but time is a revealer of motives time will reveal whether you genuinely love god or not the second thing we said that is the key and i'll pick up from here now that's where we left up last week is the power of mental transformation the second key that is required to rise above and beyond the challenges in life listen please to rise above the limitations that plague mankind to rise to a life that is of notable transgenerational relevance a degree of kingdom impact that outlives you if christ tarries the power 
of mental transformation listen i said it it never it never tires me to communicate to god's people the extent to which the quality of their paradigm can determine the course of their future in ministry in life in business in marriage in any area at all the quality of your mindset are we together and i told us last week that we are conditioned in two ways basically the first condition is a genetic programming we are programmed genetically by reason of the transfer of traits i'm being very slow and being very detailed because i want us to get this the second which is the most disastrous or most um, notable of the transformations is environmental programming say environmental programming we are programmed environmentally which can be engineered by culture past experiences our levels of exposure the environment that we grew up in chances are that if you never saw a successful person growing up you do not have a reference you see belief is based on a reference are we together you cannot believe vaguely there must be a reference preferably a physical living reference that becomes a standard and the platform upon which your convictions are built this is why the disciples were very powerful jesus was a reference and that's why every leader that must teach people part of the assignment of every leader is not only to communicate his persuasions but to be a reference of the same it is easy for people to believe when there is a measure when a when a leader is in different ways reference worthy it becomes easy for individuals to connect when a man is teaching about the anointing and there is some degree of the demonstration of the power and the grace of god upon his life it becomes easy for the listeners to be persuaded by that dimension are we together it is very difficult listen it is very difficult to persuade people over a reality that your life cannot be a reference of no matter how little the reference is that it is worthy of conviction the same thing i am teaching now i am going to be teaching it 10 15 years to come but it will be more impactful than it is now because by that time my life will be a higher reference than it is now the same way some of the things i'm sharing now were the things that i shared a number of years passed but their impact um were not as impactful as it is now of course i've grown in the anointing but also there have been maybe a few evidences here and there that can back up and support that communication communication communicating a dimension of spiritual reality or a dimension of any reality that does not have your life as a commendable reference is very frustrating this already is a lesson for someone that if you want to change your world the first key is to change yourself that you become a template enough people are not that hardened people are only obsessed with results it is god that sees the heart men look at the outward appearance they want to see that if you are teaching on divine health there is a measure of that reality at work in you if you are teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity there is a measure of that reality if you are teaching on leadership or excellence or dimensions of kingdom reality there is a level of persuasion that stems from your own experience Are we blessed tonight? Yes, the power of mental transformation. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 9, it says receiving the end of your faith. We discussed that last week. It said even the salvation of your soul, the salvation of your soul, bringing your soul through the renewal of your mind to a point where it can host the realities that are resident within your spirit. I began to discuss with us and we've done this over different series as we've discussed through the years the power of paradigms look at me listen let me tell you something as great as a man is he can limit god remember our scripture that has become an anthem in this place psalm 78 verse 41 they limited the holy one 
they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they said can god make a table in the wilderness they limited the holy one it was not their fault it was their conditioning after 430 years of servitude with no hope of deliverance it was understandable that such a people as a corporate entity can doubt god something about our culture as good as it is something about our cultural experiences have informed us has created an understanding in our minds i was talking to a, a dear friend today who came over to see me and uh, we were discussing certain things he was along the side of um, the line of marriage and all of that and i was sharing with him uh, you know generally speaking you know we we got into different discussions and i was telling him that if i were to cop to counsel an intending couple i'm not going to waste time asking a lot of useless and vague questions the first thing i want to examine is their passion for god and then the next thing i want to examine the extent of their compatibility in terms of their understanding what is your viewpoint about god what is your viewpoint about money what is your viewpoint about your assignment and purpose what is your viewpoint about your personal life what is your viewpoint about external influences in your life and home this does not just apply to the line of marriage it applies to everything there is something culture taught us about god there is something our well-meaning pastors and preachers told us about god their experiences were their sermons they preached it with confidence we embraced it with sincerity and we are victims of their limitations are we together there's something that our past experiences have done i always give an example if it took someone 10 years to get admission and you teach on favor it will take an extra anointing for that person to understand that message are we together because there is no template that represents favor in his life most of our families live from hand to mouth so every time we talk about prosperity our minds go straight to the people they insulted and the way they insulted them we have associated prosperity with negativism with fraud with with unseriousness with fetish demonic activities especially when young people are prosperous and you know let me tell you something after listening to a very powerful message after listening to a powerful series financial dominion the wealthy place the economic system of the kingdom you will think that your paradigm will change at once no it took a long time for it to be built it will take a repetition repetition of new ideas are the keys to changing our paradigms you have to you have to bring forth those new ideas again and again that's why the bible says faith comment by hearing and hearing the next word hearing there is understanding hearing and understanding what you hear by the word of god hallelujah proverbs tells us for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart he didn't say so he will become he didn't say so he is becoming for as he thinketh in his heart so is he for as he thinketh in his heart it equates my physical reality to my life this is the difference hear me brothers and sisters between a ceo who is living in an office with an ac having secretaries and pas and sitting down and you think he's just writing and then a megad a, a, a security person who is opening and closing gates in anger and frustration most times a security person is angry how can i be working so hard and i'm receiving ten thousand per month and someone is there just writing and he's receiving five hundred thousand and my answer to that frustration is what switch them switch them for only two weeks take the megad don't change anything don't give him any orientation keep him in that office and take the ceo to the gate let me tell you what will happen after two weeks people will stop going to the office the ceo will do something to that gate that will make the customers remain there are we together his hospitality his open-heartedness his calmness his people skills and all of these other factors that are important for success will compel the people to love him and remain there 
let's go to our man in the office i know what he will be doing drinking all the juice in the fridge as fast as he can because something about his mind tells him you are you are certainly not going to be here for a long time then he looks for what to steal he signs documents anyhow and then he crosses his leg watching tv changing channels enjoying the ac probably texting all the people and say my life has changed the place will be dirty i assure you he will not empty the waste bin he doesn't have that frame of excellence his paradigm of excellence is not that way he will destroy everything he will misplace documents scatter them and wonder why they are arranged accurately at the end of it he will be frustrated he will steal something sizable and run away that will be the end of that man another popular example you wore a shirt for one year it was always clean and iron nobody knew it was one year old and you gave somebody and his mindset rubbed off on the shirt in one month he turned a white shirt to brown have you seen people like that yeah listen our physical environment is but a looking glass you never change your physical reality by arguing and trying to change things it's not even by trying to dress well and no 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 it's a culture you've got to change your mind so the bible says in philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus i was not born this way i re-engineered myself using the word of god and following those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise are we together you must be disloyal to any understanding and paradigm that has given demon spirits access points to destroy your life hallelujah paradigms there are people who will use a water system toilet a very clean toilet and finish i mean in a house not even the one in the hostels a clean toilet they enter the bathroom they saw everything clean they use it and leave it there and just go out smiling and they tell you are finished they took their mindsets there their mindsets took them there are we together there is something about excellence as obvious as it should be you must be trained to discern it don't ever assume that because your mindset has changed it is so that's the reason why the higher you rise the more you must have a greater capacity for patience because when your mindset changes you wonder sometimes i look at people and i am amazed the way they think certain things that should be so obvious you are wondering how their mindset can veer off and give them such suggestions the power of paradigms are we together a man can come to you someone can come to a jimmy for instance and sit down and look at him and look at his house and see how god has blessed him and then just look at him and say sir don't be offended anything for the boys and you are wondering you have access to a great man what is there to say sir if you were to be at my age what will you advise me to do or if you will be at my level in life what two things do you think i should focus on now we never ask questions have you seen people who have access to great men one guy came to my hotel room in abuja and he came just because of his friend he wouldn't even come he came there because of some well, a senior, someone like a mentor to him who is my friend. They came to greet me. When they said hello, we're discussing, I served them myself. I'm telling you, before anybody picked the thing, the guy carried the, the something and opened it and was taking it. Whereas the person, his mentor now kept quiet and was listening. You see why that guy is his mentor? Are we together? there is a logic to people's frustration you can trace it and see why they are where they are paradigms mindsets why should i dress well um, do, am i rich paradigm are we together there are people praying endlessly to have pot belly just like that why because based on certain cultural experiences now listen i'm not being sarcastic I'm teaching here there are cultures am i right that train people the moment they see you with some level of weight they say ah 
this is things are working but you know that absolutely nothing is working paradigms that's what informs people to live fake lives there are people who if god blesses with fifty thousand now their mindset tells them look you need to do something around you to make people believe you belong so they run away and blow up everything and they come to people and you see sometimes let me tell you something when i meet people who are greater than me i have no pressure to prove any point because i know i'm stupid when i'm doing it but then you see a lot of people with their little understanding small results here and there they come and they never learn they are trying to impress you it's me i'm a business person i just read robert kiyosaki's book and you are watching his ignorance that act alone is a revelation of where you are because great people are silent let her works speak for her at the gates and so when we're done let me finish up my story they were about to go i was greeting them you know and then the gentleman just came to me and said sir please just one favor i said what is it say let me snap with you and i looked at him i said this this boy is not wise honestly speaking that's why we must crave for wisdom I said this this guy is not smart one bit I said alright that's okay he snapped with me about three hours later my friend called me and said the guy posted a picture on Facebook that me and my very good friend Apostle Joshua Selman now hold on I'm not insulting him he may even be listening now listen listen do you know that gentleman thinks is by snapping with me so that every other person around Look, let me tell you, if a billionaire wears slippers and kaftan and you wear suit and stand close to him, something about you will tell you you are not yet ready for this place. If Benny Hinn stands today and I side, side by side with him and they say colleagues in ministry, even me I know, God knows, the devil knows that we are not colleagues. They will snap me standing when you watch the picture, it, I will be kneeling down. Because the reality of my heart <laughs> will reflect itself. Amen. Say paradigms. Say mindsets. Say programmings. Something that your parents held was responsible for their limitations. Culture. Experiences. Are we together? I don't want to be ahead of myself because the third thing I'll be talking about is where we'll dwell today in details and um, I trust that God will change our mindsets now let me tell you something there is nothing God can do about your life as powerful as he is if you are not willing to change your mindset Lord I want you I want you to bless me and God says okay can you allow me work on you there's nothing wrong with me God says alright there is a mindset that is responsible for poverty there is a mindset that has, keep, has kept many men of God limited in life and ministry. There are certain mindsets that have, have kept corporate organizations small. Sometimes I wish that I knew the things I've learned in the last two, three years. Maybe that I knew them 10, 20 years ago. I would have been 100 times without exaggerating higher than I am now. I pray that you will receive these things and you will believe them. In one minute, lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, there is something in my mind that is responsible for my limitations. Please take it out of me. Go ahead and pray. Take it out of me. Take it out of me. There's something. I grew up in Nigeria and there is a way Nigerians are lovely people. They are great people. But there is a faulty paradigm. Take it away from my life. Take it away from my life. I declare my disloyalty to every paradigm. No matter how long I have held it. A paradigm that has stopped me from accessing the anointing. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a leader. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a visionary person. A paradigm that has stopped me from being wealthy. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Alright, so let's take today's own. The third key. Key.
key number three to rising above recession key number three to rising above any kind of limitation is the discovery and the development of your value and your abilities i'm going to dwell here there is a lot to talk about here the discovery and the development of your abilities your value I've done a lot of teachings and I have taught again and again how that a man's relevance, please listen to me, a man's relevance is not based on chance, is not based on some kind of sentiments, the disparity, the, the stratification between the wealthy, between the great, the anointed, the influential among many other reasons primarily is their value write this down please your value is a representation of your worth your value is a representation of your worth w-o-r-d your value is a representation of your worth based on the solutions you provide the problems you solve and the lives you transform your value is a representation of your worth based on the solutions you provide the problems you solve and the lives you transform this is the index for measuring a man's value so when we say a person is valuable a preacher is valuable a businessman is valuable a leader is valuable please listen to me we're not necessarily just talking about um, anything vague or anything fetish a measure of the perception that people have over you on the strength of the solutions that you provide on the strength of the problems that you solve and on the strength of the lives and destinies that you transform put it in another way if you are not providing any kind of solution if you are not solving any kind of problem and if you are not contributing to the transformation of the lives and destinies of people you are not valuable and hear me please relevance and wealth in the kingdom is built on a reward system we've said it again and again let me just do a recap on it or touch a bit into that right you can get the message the wealthy place write this down this is the fundamental law that governs wealth and abundance and governs greatness in the kingdom our rewards in life and that reward can be financial the sense of security the sense of honor that we receive whatever it is our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what we do number one the demand or the need for what we do number two our ability to do what we do number three the difficulty in replacing us my relevance in life my relevance as a man of God is not just tied to God the demand for what I do my ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me let me tell you when you understand this you can accurately gauge why you are where you are right now this is why pastors are wealthy listen pastors think they are wealthy i was teaching the school of ministry uh, school of ministry students and i said many men of god think they are rich because they are serving god that's not the reason why people are wealthy it's based on a law if i am blessed today among other reasons is based on the perception that you and other people around this nation and in certain parts of the world have about me which is on the strength of what I do my proficiency in doing it are we together a man of God is not rich because he prayed for the sick a man of God is rich because he's providing solutions 
His solution may be supernatural in origin. The solution may be spiritual. When you connect people to Jesus Christ, you are providing an eternal solution to the predicament of men. And the system of God's economy was designed that every time you dispense value, whether given for free or sold, a reward must come to you. A reward must come to you. The laws are inflexible. You cannot change them. So for as long as there is an anointing upon me to bring people to the place of encounter, for as long as there is an anointing upon me to birth transformation of the minds and destinies, for as long as there is an anointing to birth revival, to bring miracles, signs and wonders, I remain valuable as far as God is concerned and the benefactors. Let me tell you why that is powerful. Much more than business. It is an intrinsic value. Value that is not dependent on any external environment. And value that is rewarded only based on the perception of the benefactors. So one person can bless me with 100 naira as a representation of his comprehension of my value. Another person can bless me with 10 million as his comprehension of the perception of my value. Don't say I am poor. Don't say I am mediocre. What value are you bringing to the table of destiny? Call this stage the table of greatness. There are enough seats for everyone, but your past is your value. Your past is your value. Not just any value. Values that are needed and useful. Values that are needed and useful applicable to the predicament of your generation God is helping someone are we together what have you brought to the table of greatness that author you, you know listen listen do you know why they call people thieves and frown because you see rewards but you do not see the value that is commensurate to that reward. That's why we hate armed robbers. An armed robber brings a gun and says, give me your one million. And you tell him what is the value. He says, I have no value, but I have a gun to threaten you. So it is bad. But that same one million, you will give it to someone who offers a value that is worth it. Listen, you don't sit down and wish to rise. You grow in value to the level that matches what you desire. So, Frank Edward ministers and based on the perception of his value, someone can bless him with 10 million. Whereas there is another musician somewhere in Samaru who may be moving around and nobody will bless him. What is the difference? Their value. Your value is a representation of your worth based on your ability. There are two dimensions to value. I want to talk a bit about value. Number one is intrinsic value. Write it down. Intrinsic or inherent value. Value that came with you. It was a gift from God to you. Part of your packaging and part of your wiring. It can be improved upon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we blessed this night? I really want to challenge you. Look at me, please. Please do not trivialize what I'm teaching you. God is not a herbalist. This is the key that lifts men above recession. I was talking to one of our ladies. She works in the bank. And um, I was talking to her this morning. And I told her, I said, how is it going in the bank? And she said, Kai, things are, are really bad for many people. Though. But she said, there are some. I said that's right in my mind I said that's me you are now talking about me he said there are some their lives have increased and multiplied do you know the concept of recession is not supposed to apply to an individual recession only makes sense when you look at it from a corporate and a territorial perspective there was famine in Samaria minus the king minus the king 
Number two, minus Elijah. All the people, Elijah never said, please, even Elijah begged for bread. Elijah did not beg for bread in Samaria. He came gallantly and saw people eating their children. The other one said, we ate my child yesterday. We said, let's boil this other child and the woman refused. Are we together? Prophet, we boiled my child yesterday. When I was eating my child, we ate together. Now is the turn to eat her own child and they refuse. And the prophet said no. Let me tell you something. Your value vetoes your education. Your value vetoes your cultural background. Your value vetoes any limitation. I don't care what it is. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Listen. Believe me, brothers and sisters, when I tell you your value vetoes a lot of things. Sunday Adelaja, 96% of his membership in a communist nation, right? Ukraine, a communist nation, 96% of his members are white in a communist nation. Value. The key to eradicating a sense of unworthiness is not criticizing great people. This is what a lot of pastors go through. This is what a lot of business people go through. This is what a lot of individuals go through. They think the key is resentment and anger and hatred. No. The key is to pay the price of discovery and developing your value. A student comes in backtrack five years, six years. A naive young person probably in his teenage comes into an institution i want to study medicine not even having an idea of what he wants to do are we together or the implication and he goes through five six probably seven years of rigorous training they never change his skin they never change his clothes they only change his mind and after six seven years a panel of people will test him and accredits the fact that he is worthy of being called a doctor and they issue a little piece of paper that becomes his authorization value I am surprised when many people say why am I poor what kind of question is that why am I poor why am I suffering the recession and I, I mean no disrespect as I communicate this everyone is left to his lot if Bill Gates for instance let me use finances if Bill Gates comes here right now and says everybody go and hold someone whose life you changed if you can hold five people you receive a million dollars some of us will roam to everybody you touch somebody you say I will slap you you have not added any value to my life why, why do you want to hold me? I have never been blessed, not by your wisdom, not by your spiritual life, not by your anointing, not by your academics. Nothing about you has changed me. But there are others, there will not be enough room. Everybody says, you changed me. You changed me. You blessed me. You advised me. My business is flourishing because of the idea you gave me. That sickness in my body left because of the anointing upon your life. The power of your secret place changed my life. You preached a message and brought a dimension that changed me. Problem solved. Solutions provided. Lives transformed. And there is a reward waiting for you. I guarantee you. No witch and no wizard from any village and anywhere has the power and the capacity to stand an individual that has worked upon his value. What is my value? What is my gift? What is that ability that can bail me out? Let me tell you something. And I'm, I'm a Nigerian. I want to say something that is very serious right now. I'm a Nigerian. I love Nigeria. I love everyone in this country. 
We are brothers and sisters. Are we together? But listen. Do you know why? I want to be sincere with you. Do you know why a lot of people are suffering this recession now? I know many people think he's Buhari. Others think he's Jonathan. Other people think he's PDP, APC. I'm not a politician. Are you together? Let me tell you. Something about the nose diving of the oil revealed that we have never truly been valuable as a people. We only receive natural resources and we have been covering it for years. The same way to happen to your destiny. I'm in a, a department. They give everybody food free of charge. So I think, let me tell you, you do not generalize impact and success. You must be sure what parts you are contributing. Otherwise, you will be ashamed with time. We are worship team. We are all great. But in all sincerity, what is your unique contribution? One day you hold the mic alone. And on that day, we know that you are the one limiting the worship team. On that day, we know, ah, so that mistake in the keyboard comes from you. We have been managing it, but right now, we are a group of intelligent lecturers. We are all intelligent people. The day you have to do a presentation as a person, life must single you out one day to defend yourself. I belong to an anointed ministry, great and wonderful. We are shaking the world. I agree with you. A day will come you will stand before the sick. Apostle, I'm not there. Ejimi, I'm not there. My head of department, prayer, ushery, decoration, they are all not there. On that day, that's when you will know whether the impartations you've been receiving or otherwise. Life will challenge you. Life will test it. And until you are able to prove it the disciples kept enjoying corporate success until one day when Jesus climbed up the Mount of Transfiguration they were happy they brought an epileptic person they said don't worry about Jesus we are here just keep him down they struggled they were embarrassed nothing happened let me tell you do you know what causes jealousy the ease and the flawlessness that someone who has paid the price to be valuable does on something you have been frustrated about you've been praying on a sick body and you gave all kinds of reasons no this person cannot be sick then the person comes for a meeting and even without being prayed for before the opening prayer he's healed and then the person testifies exactly as it happened you know how people testify they will say it the way it happened may God make you to, be, to develop an appetite to be valuable an appetite to be valuable let me tell you how you know you are really valuable when no monetary value placed on you becomes a burden to the giver you are exceptionally valuable listen listen I can't remember how much this is how much they bought it but let's assume this is 300,000 just an assumption right assume that this pulpit is 300,000 when they call the price what do you do you look at it the material the quality and he says okay if they look at this and say bring 10 million you look at it and say no that's the same way they rate you so you say 20,000 they say you are telling the truth then you say 100,000 they say for where is money free like that but there are others they don't even say anything their value says any amount priceless 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 and so someone brings 10 million and says sir please don't be offended it's a privilege for me to do this may you be such a person may you be such a person hallelujah Benihin is coming to Nigeria and the plans that have in fact to a point that the very ministry that is bringing him does not even have absolute control over his coming again the Christian bodies have had to come in because they sat and said no 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 we are going to come in now he's not only ministering in lagos he's also going to worry to go and minister in a crusade again say value yeah when benihin enters in a nation no matter who is invited inviting him he's received by the ambassador of the america and a presidential delegation so his coming is not something you wake up and come by mistake even if he's strolling his personality we call it human capital My, my desire.
desire is that under God, myself and this great ministry will be so valuable. This place has become like a place of pilgrimage right now. The protocol has had to start making arrangements with hotels around. Why? Because every week groups are coming, individuals are coming from all over the nation. It's called value. If we remain at this level, we will never rise. But if we keep rising by the Spirit of God and through determination, a time will come, somebody will come from another state, another nation, and say it's a privilege, finally. Are you that valuable? Are you that valuable that your absence is an interruption to somebody's life? Are you so valuable? I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart. Then you will know why certain... The money we are saying has left Nigeria did not disappear. Money is like energy. It can neither be created nor destroyed. It is transferred. So it leaves from the point of no value, passes through the place of small value and lands in the place of capital value. Say amen. Wanting something for nothing is fraud. Wanting something for nothing is wickedness. Now let me tell you how many of us approach it. Oh God, will you keep looking at me like this? And God says, I've been looking. I set laws and I put preachers. He said, let them come back to, to life. Remember the prayer of, of, of who? The rich man. Let them come back to life. He said, no, they have the prophets and the law. If they will not listen to them, even if somebody comes back to the dead, they will not listen. Just like there are people God has anointed, but many people will not listen. Why should you fail in life? Your background? Who told you it's because of your background? There are people today with no arms, but they are valuable. There are people with no legs, they are valuable. There are people with no eyes, they are valuable. There are people who cannot speak. They are valuable. We don't love Jesus just because he's the son of God. He's really valuable. He's an expression of infinite value by every standard. Are we together? Any man can determine his lot in life. Any man can determine his lot in life. Your reward is in exact proportion. But apostle, I'm a graduate and now I'm working. I'm getting 50,000. But now I'm married to a wife and three children. That's the limit of your value. Because your education was never designed to fund your assignment. It was designed to help you. You are only working at the limit of what you know. And if you do not know more, you will remain that way. Hallelujah. Yesterday, um, one of the protocol, he, he usually helps me. If, if they need to fix anything in my car, he helps me to fix it. And um, I was going to drop him and I decided to just take a stroll with him. I like talking to people. I decided to take a stroll with him and then to turn and come back. And I was talking to him. I said, do you know why you are in this car now? And he looked at me. I said, there are so many people in Zaria. You can drive and you have loyalty and integrity. It's called value. It earned you the right here. When we stop, let me confess, we went to buy suya. Praise God. <laughs> and so, while they were ordering the suya, I made an order of the suya and he was sitting. I said, do you know why you are sitting close to me now? He said, no, sir. I said, value. You are the one who went to fix the car. It gave you the privilege to do it. I told him, do you know why we are not in the filling station now? He said, no. He said, because the tank is full. The day it finishes or gets more, we will need the filling station. Are we together? Why have I not come to you? Why have I not called you? You don't call me. Why should I? Why should I? You are proving as if I'm nothing. You made yourself so. There is a way you make yourself. There are people who cannot even pick calls. There are others who are angry. Aaron, I don't like what you are doing. Haba, 
Is it because God has lifted you now? You left us. That's always what they say. I intend to rise. Whoever intends to rise with me, then we move together. I cannot love you so much to be so loyal and keep myself low. I'm telling you why many of us are offended with so many people. Offended. My friend, we used to eat together. But you were not doing the same thing. Now the person has risen. You call the person and a secretary picks. Hello, sir, so, 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 organization. Please let me talk to him, Jare. Tell him my name is uh, Ajayi. You don't know me again. And you are shouting and raking and getting angry. May God make you so valuable. Listen to me. Listen to me. May God make you so valuable that your value transcends territories. Because there are values that are only... There are people... That's what we call local champion. One who is valuable within a territory. And so when you step out to another territory, you are as inert as somebody whose potential is not at work. But there are certain people, even celebrity musicians, even if they step out by mistake, everybody is snapping them, they have to run. Now, they may be going to hell. Are we together? But as far as value is concerned, generally speaking, they are communicating value. It's just the content of their music that is demonic. Their vocal training is excellent to a fault. Now you come on stage and you say, I want to rise. What are you called into? I'm called into the music ministry. Really? Yes. What have you done so far? I've been, you know, a gentleman came and met me one time and he came and said that he's looking for sponsors. I said, what for? That, that he wants to produce an album. I said, who is mentoring you? He said, nobody. I said, who have, can you play any instrument? He said, no. I said, who has ever approved, genuinely approved of your music? He said, no. I said, I'm not going to help you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really helping you by not helping you because I'm, I'm helping you realize the mistake fast. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Listen. Can't you see that this is God's bailout system? I came from a background where we were living in a hut with mud. The, the mud is not in your mind. The mud is not in your mind. Jesus was born in Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He broke that limit. Stop giving excuses. Make up your mind from today. There is something my world can celebrate. Years ago, when I was staying in a little room, praying and reading books, all my money went to buying books. Buy the truth and sell it not. God, you have given me grace for music and worship. Who can invite me because of the grace I carry? Don't flatter yourself in mediocrity. Challenge yourself based on a reference that is global. Don't flatter yourself. You make mistakes, you sing off key and someone says, Kai, you know, Elijah, this is fantastic. You say, really? No, you didn't do well. You didn't do well. We were glorified because of the anointing. But vocally speaking, you didn't do well. This lack of preparedness is what makes people to mock themselves. Any competition they hear around, they will come. Have you seen people like that? And they say, why are you here? They say, I'm here to win. And you watch the, your competitors. Just by looking at them, you see the flawlessness of their preparation. And just the preliminary screening, you are back home. And then you say, no, in Nigeria, this is because this person is Yoruba. That's why they didn't take me. No, sir, you are not good. Be honest with yourself. It's, I'm not saying you cannot be good. Listen, value is only valuable when competence is added to it. Value only becomes valuable when competence is added to it. Yesterday I was studying on diamonds. I just decided to study on diamonds. I didn't know that there were different kinds of diamonds. Different kinds. And I was seeing the diamonds and the, the recall in finding them. 
and I mean their structure, the, the precision of their structure is what makes them valuable. Are you competent? Are you competent? Seest thou a man diligent in his ministry? Diligent in his business. It's only a matter of time. You may be soaking Gary now, but diligence is like a plane. It will lift you beyond the limitations. It can be raining and you just take a flight and within one minute, you are already out of that rain. You are not even aware that it's raining again until you land. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. I will be a wicked preacher. I will be a wicked man of God to not challenge you in the area of value because that's what I'm doing with my life. And by the grace of God and in all sincerity, that's what has brought me where I am. And I told you, where I am now is my preparation of yesterday. Tomorrow will reveal to you what I'm doing today. Value always precedes manifestation. So when you see a man manifest, that's not his true state. It is his passive state based on your seeing him now. In business, in ministry, there are many pastors who don't know how this thing works. And they may never find out. There are many people who don't know how this thing works. I'm sorry to say it, but look at Zari as a case study. Almost every business in Zaria, almost, not all, but almost every business in Zaria is tainted by mediocrity, smallness, average. There's, there's nothing world class. There's, there's no touch of excellence in it. We are limited because of our culture. I have my small shop. This is nice. We never learn. Someone has paid the price and made the mistake for you. Then you make it again. No, you must learn from other people's mistakes. Are we together? I have hardly seen things in this city, and I say it with all humility, that have impressed me to know that this is at a level of a global repute. From our hotels, are we together? To our restaurant services, in fact, for the most part, they are terrible. Yet there are many of us seated here. If I ask you now, what did you say? I've been cooking, you are the only one who has not eaten. The fact that I've not eaten your food means nobody has recommended it. And that means they've been flattering you by saying it's sweet. If food is delicious, we are not stupid people. A means wife makes cakes. Everybody knows. She's not necessarily done any great marketing. Let her works speak for her at the gates. What is so exceptional about what you do? What do you do that will make me feel like I am losing a lot if I don't partner with you? Everybody say competence. Say it, competence. Say it again, competence. Listen, if you pay attention to what I'm saying, you will reap an endless, you will reap an endless benefit. Favor then is when preparedness. The day God wants to bless you, he will station your destiny helpers close to you. Men and women who have the perception and the strength to reward your value. And then he says, now you have prepared yourself. There are too many, you know the problem with many of us, look at me. This, 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 this pressure for recognition. I want to know that I'm a CEO. I said it, I think it was to the school of ministry students. People write books after 10, 20 years of a track record. But in Nigeria, people write books to start up what they are doing. So someone who has nothing writes 81 keys to the billionaire lifestyle. A book it's an authorization for men to listen to you based on a result that is obvious in your life. You are documenting your persuasion to create a track for people to follow. Years ago, a few, well, they're not really my friends, but they're ministers too. They met me and said, Apostle, 
at your level there are some bishops who are not like you you should be on tv and radio i said i hear so that i will get to a point where i'm limited and i have to beg for partners isaiah 77 give me isaiah 61 give me 61 naira or 610 naira i don't want to do all those things I don't want to stand on airplane gimmicks. I want a situation where the day Koinonia comes on air, someone will say, this is what I've been looking for. I have, I have one, I mean, I have a business that is producing $10 million every month. I've been looking for a ministry to sponsor. This is it. Solutions provided. Problems solved. Lives transformed. And you enter your Sabbath at once. Please hear me, Koinonia, and all those following. Not everybody is a victim of this recession. I tell you the sincere truth from the depth of my heart. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. The finance of this ministry has skyrocketed in a way and a dimension that is irrecoverable this year more than any year put together now please i'm sorry if it looks like i'm boasting i'm only challenging you in the time we call recession say something i do not know say it again something i do not know may be responsible for my limitation one of my pastor friends started bus transport, bus services, and he called me. He said, Apostle, I can't believe this. You've been transporting people on bus services and we're not so much in our church. Just at one junction where everybody will wait. After one month, we looked at when they sent the report, I said, nobody, a trek from wherever you are coming. And we've done this without fail. Not for Friday's program any time this ministry is holding any program once it is night we're a responsible ministry at any time whether it was planned or not brothers and sisters there is something that is being done this is where i'm taking you to it was not like that our first crusade they were almost locking me because of 150,000 aaron whereas the money that is circulating now was still there i have learned through pain i have learned through mistakes I've learned through mentorship and you are receiving it for free. I pray that you will treasure it and I pray that it will lift you higher than ever. Some of you are about to get married. You know you are not ready. Are we together? You already know, not by revelation, by wisdom that your wife is going to suffer. You know that your children are going to suffer. How do I know that there is no plan? Dotham was became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. You are not preparing your way. There can't be greatness. Don't be too quick to show forth. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Prophesy to yourself. Say myself. Prepare. Myself. Be competent. Myself. Work on yourself. make noise don't take this colleague mentality moving around i used to know you pastor femi we are fellow pastors colleague mentality is the key to the undoing of many people oh we were classmates the same class the same university the same this the, we are both doctors we are both professors no 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 the bible says one star different from another in glory Say in the name of Jesus. There is a, an ability. Say there is a gift. Within me. That is greater than Zaria. Greater than Nigeria. There is an intrinsic value. Within me. That can bless me. That can bless the kingdom. And I will search it out. Hallelujah. There is an intrinsic value. Now, intrinsic value has to do with value that is inherent. The only thing you do is to develop it is there. I'll give you an example. Intellectual property is an intrinsic value. 
you don't refrigerate it you don't warm it you don't keep it in a safe in a bank it's there is there you've trained your mind intelligence intellectual property is there he's playing this keyboard now this is intrinsic value is value within him value that does not depend on the external environment for its performance are we together now yeah a photocopy machine is not an intrinsic value the machine needs a demand the machine needs a lot of things the machine needs light are we together the greatest way to rise is to walk first on your intrinsic value you have the grace to sing work on it you are an entrepreneur work on it don't say i'm a ceo ceo that is not producing results is a sign to sit down say i'm a potential ceo there are people moving all around with complimentary cards and flattering themselves i am this and that and that i'm into real estate agro allied products and so on and so forth we have branches in in, in ghana Bene Republic, Portacourt, Lagos, and so on and so forth. And you look at the person who is talking. You ask him, sir, what do you know about real estate? He said, look, that's not the most important thing. Me, I'm telling you, my father did it. He gave you, and he has one plot of land somewhere. You see, we, we mock ourselves. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging without content is like a balloon. You hold a balloon and claim that the balloon is, is a metal. You will just touch it and it will burst. I sing better than many people who are called into the music ministry. Yet, they want me to buy their album. No. I told you last week, there are many people who claim they can cook. They have restaurants. Are we together? And you start bullying people and say, ah, shouldn't you come and eat in my restaurant? I saw you the other day. Ella. You should come to my restaurant to eat. Are we not fellow koinonia people? She wants to be healthy. She wants to be healthy. And as far as it is concerned, you have not worked on yourself. One of our school of ministry ladies, uh, um, she made one beautiful work, just a beautiful artwork. The students saw it. I mean, she's here. Very fantastic artwork. And when I saw it, I said, my goodness, this is excellent. I told her, improve yourself and monetize your value. Monetizing your value is the last thing you do when it is flawlessly competent. Then you place a price on it. Are we together? Now, I want everybody to write. Write three things you know God has put in you that must be developed and deployed. Please write it down. Young, old, write it down type it right do whatever it is please write it down don't flatter yourself don't write what you don't have just patiently think and you'll find your own don't just write because your neighbor wrote something value value Aaron is here he handles most of the logistics of the you know people around different kinds of logistics why because he's worked on himself and he's still working on himself the other day I went to his house and I saw a blackboard close to his, uh, just a little like uh, uh, dining or thereabout and his uh, little office that he has and I saw him writing goals. I saw targets. I saw plans of action. I said, this is excellent. This person is going to go far. Please, do not think discovery simply means it is worthy of reward. That you have discovered a thing does not mean they will reward you. It must be developed to the highest level of excellence and then communicated with integrity communicated with discipline and communicated with the anointing hallelujah I met a pastor and the pastor told me something he said man of God if you is quite an elderly man he said if you continue going the way you are going you're going to have such an exceptional ministry. I said, thank you, sir. I intend to. And that's why I seek people like you 
to add to my life i am not ashamed of my ignorance i'm not ashamed of my limitations and the things that i do not know there are many things i do not know i know some but there are many others if i knew them i would not be where i am and i humble myself to seek for knowledge i see the way people trivialize knowledge and trivialize the sacrifices of others are we together you call somebody you perceive to be valuable and then you tell the person when can i come and meet you or when can you come and meet me and the person says why you say i have a business proposal i want us to rob minds together sit down with your broke bad attitude and you will never rise never never rise there's so many people who do that why am i challenging you I want you to rise beyond the recession. You've heard the testimonies of people. This money has not flown anywhere. This greatness has not flown anywhere. The concept of recession to an individual is a mirage. Hear me. Please hear me. I understand business. I'm not daft. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm saying. The concept of recession is not supposed to be explained from an individual platform. It is when you look at the economy territorially societally then you can say based on the gdp of a nation based on certain indices a nation when it does not meet certain things then there is a recession there is inflation or whatever it is but not an individual there has been no time in the bible where famine affected everybody there were there, there has always been exemption those who offer value are the ones who are exempted please hear me what gives you the justification that between today friday and next friday something would have entered your hand or i'm not necessarily just saying money somebody would have acknowledged the fact that god is using you to bless him my life has been transformed what value do you have you see the anointing does two things it activates something within you that was not there and amplifies something within you that is there it activates something within you that was previously not there or introduces a better word introduces something within you that was not there like the healing grace right like revelation the capacity utterance but then it also amplifies something within you that is there like creativity like leadership like your gift so number one your encounter with God that produces a fear of God in you number two a transformed mind transform beyond your cultural limitations number three the discovery and the development of your abilities your value please do not forget this greatness wealth any kind of achievement in the kingdom is based on a reward system it's not just the issue of the will of god the issue of the will of god as far as our greatness is concerned is not a mystery it is clear in the word I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord Jeremiah 29 and the 11th chapter thoughts of good and or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day right that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you there is always a part you have to play there is a part that i have to play huh joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law he says shall not depart from out of thy mouth it says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then he says then only then shall thou make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success success that does not steal away the time of your family success that does not steal away your life are we together 
give me five ten minutes let me talk a little let me take point three a little more write this down please I know that I've taught a lot about finances but let me just talk for five ten minutes on a few things about our financial life number one let me tell you something a job alone will limit you I want to I want to expand your horizon and work on your creativity a bit a job alone will limit you brothers and sisters no matter how much of a job you get no matter how great of a job you get a job does not have the capacity to fund your assignment your needs are plenty family needs the average African family has siblings that are looking up to you for assistance it's capital intensive to live in Nigeria to send children to school almost all of us here by the time you are a Christian and you are born again you have commitments to your church to your group to your ministry and part of it is financial commitment part of it there are several things you have to do that take money from you you are broke let me give us a little financial intelligence we'll always add this you are broke anytime your inflow is far far less than your outflow it, it is it is it, it you will always without fail be on deficit one naira comes into your life you need four naira to go out of your life you will be in trouble you will have to be in trouble you cannot be earning fifty thousand naira probably a hundred thousand and believe that that in itself you remove tight you remove a lot of things it is just not enough that's the challenge with our parents hundred thousand was enough when they had one child now they had they have five children but their finances have not increased so it's pinning them and straining them to death are we together what then is the solution activate other streams of income 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 don't sit down running around and say there's no job and i don't mean don't do small mediocre things that waste your time your energy your money and then at the end nothing comes out from it activate streams of income work on your mindset monetize your intrinsic value that is being developed you will rise above recession i tell you Are we together? Did you know for instance? Did you know for instance? Every week we rent chairs. In the dozens. During the miracle service we rent thousands of chairs in the dozens. That's someone's business. Are we together? That's someone's business. Every week. There are things only in this ministry. Alone. That can make an individual a millionaire. If he knows how to create a system around that value and supply it. Just, I mean just koinonia alone. Please activate streams of income. Take responsibility for your life. And don't give people anything substandard. You are, you are insincere and you are ungodly. When you wet the appetite of people over a value you know you cannot offer. Don't be that insincere make sure that you have worked on yourself and you are competent enough then you can open up your hands for value don't collect a contract to help somebody roof his house and then you roof nonsense no don't do that if you know you cannot work on it package yourself work on yourself i work on myself every day i returned back from my trip yesterday as tired as i was i made sure that my daily goals were met please don't you think that it is just the anointing the anointing is there i'm going to talk about it paul said i thank my he says i am what i am by the grace of god he said but this grace was not showered upon me in that i labored more than ye all i prepare an average of two to three sermons every week it takes time it takes research 
it takes stayed in the spirit there are other aspects of my life i'm involved in what are you doing there is no laziness don't sit down and say oh god when will you change my my situation don't sit down and say who will come and marry me out of this problem nobody at least nobody in koinonia and brothers don't wait and say which lady bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the lord are we together this is the undoing of africa this is the undoing of many people my neighbors um they bought a few months ago they bought a grinding engine and the moment they bought that grinding engine and stationed there at once they became relevant in that environment almost all the houses within that environment no longer enter a car and go to Samaru to go and grind beans or whatever they come to them what is their reward the transportation of everybody who should go there now comes to them a place that was previously very quiet and conservative now you see the people early in the morning the engine is up and they are grinding sometimes till late in the night and they are making money from it please I want you to go back and sit down and be sincere with yourself young and old sit down and say I now see why things are not working in my life I now see why I'm feeling the heat of the recession I am not saying you should be a money monger remember we've done financial dominion so you cannot sit down and say now which business do I do uh -uh. that's a wrong question how do I develop myself to rise to a point of value when you are valuable then now you build a system around that value that's what we call business business is simply the art of packaging your value that has been developed to serve a targeted people then you receive financial rewards among other things there's nothing mysterious about business building a business is simply having a value converting it to a product or a service that is needed and useful and then creating a system that informs your potential customers of what you have to give very simple but it's not as simple as it sounds the last point rise to a point of value rise to a point of value the last point what is the fourth key to becoming transgenerationally relevant the fourth key to rising beyond recession we name the series thrive to thrive does not mean to manage the tribe to thrive means to blossom thrive gives a picture of a plant growing out you see how a plant grows out of the soil and you see it moving regardless of of the strength of the soil it shoots through it and it blossoms that's what it means to thrive you don't thrive if there are no obstacles you thrive in spite of obstacles the fourth key is an encounter with the anointing ah anointing anointing fall on me anointing fall on me let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me anointing fall sing it one more time everybody anointing fall power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Ah. I love what I'm about to share with you. I'm telling you because it's something that has changed my life. You, you, see, you see the amazing dimension of God when you understand the anointing. You are amazing, 
them You are amazing You are amazing You are amazing Oh, oh, oh Anointing, write this down. Let me give you a few definitions about the anointing. You are amazing, girl. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Write this down. The anointing is God's seal of authorization to represent Him in your territory. The anointing is God's seal of authorization. It's His authorization upon an individual to represent Him. The authorization for legislature the authorization to represent God and to represent heaven on earth the anointing number two the anointing is the capacity to produce change and compel compliance the capacity to produce change and compel compliance Psalm 66 verse 3 How terrible art thou in thy ways Through the greatness of thy power Shall thy enemies submit themselves to you To compel compliance Number 3 Now I love this definition The anointing Is an empowerment To manifest the possibilities in God an empowerment to manifest, to reveal, to make known the possibilities that are resident in God. There are possibilities in God. It's a slogan that we use here. Experience possibilities. I think the media should do a montage on this. Experience possibilities. It's a slogan we have come to not just recite but believe we've indoctrinated ourselves with the fact that there there are limitless possibilities in God and those limitless possibilities can find expression to the degree to which the unction the grace of God is at work upon the life of an individual the Bible is a compendium an unfolding of the possibilities that are resident in God Revealed from generation to generation. Hallelujah. I got a testimony recently. And um, I'm sure they may be following online. And they, they sent it to me so I can share it in the open. When we went to Yola for the last crusade a few months. I think a month or two ago. We went to Yola. One of the person who was driving me around. is a doctor, PhD. You know, with his wife. He's been married and they've, they've been, I mean, no child this thing has not worked for them and he decided that he was going to drive me around as a seed you know it's been a while they've been married they're probably following now and his wife couldn't take in and you know when they were done we we're about to leave I asked him I said what would you want the Lord to do and then prayed for them and he sent me a text I think it was on our way to Bauchi now on our no no Bauchi it was on our way to Bauchi I just got a text he said apostle the text is still on my phone he said I called to tell you that my wife went to the hospital and they said I think she's three or a month pregnant say results shout it listen results are evidences that God is alive not just an evidence that a man is anointed it's much more than that it's much more than that it's much more than that 
during our dinner we'll be playing some videos i hope that the media would consider that i don't know what their plans are but i hope that they should incorporate that and one of the things that we're going to be doing is playing clips and showing you a few pictures of some of the external ministrations and some of you will marvel and wonder marvel and wonder at the hand of god and what he can do when a man is anointed i've said it and i will say it again and again the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference how can the anointing make a difference when it is the difference it is the very difference when all is said and done the grace that comes upon the life of a man i have found david my servant and with my holy oil i have anointed him and the enemy shall not exert upon him and then he reads on and he says and in his in my glory shall his horn be exalted listen let me tell you something i have come to respect the anointing not because of what it has done in my life alone but this ministry you see is a place of possibilities the testimonies the tearful testimonies that have come and it's not just because of joshua selman take the anointing out of my life and i'm as empty as this chair you see are we together someone's life is going to be changed because of the anointing someone's life will rise because of the anointing listen after you've worked on your gift your gift needs to be anointed it's one thing to be gifted but is your gift anointed it says the spirit of man is the candle of the lord but candle without fire on it cannot give illumination are we together there is an anointing that can come upon you and change the dimension of your entrepreneurial exploits and you will see things happen that you never believe there is an anointing that can come on you and your academic career just skyrockets in a way and a dimension there is an anointing that can come upon your music ministry so much more than the vocal competence and your work you lift a voice and sing a song and that song becomes somebody's healing that song becomes someone's i was watching a video today covenant christian center and i was watching their their um leadership their, their summit that they hold their yearly summit and i was listening to some speakers and while they were talking i said my god these guys are not just business moguls they are they are absolutely anointed absolutely anointed are we together thou anointed my head with oil you did not anoint my cup you anointed my head but that anointed translated to my cup overflowing there is a relationship between what is on your head and what flows from your cup thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over in second kings chapter 4 the wife of the son of the prophets went to Elisha and Elisha said what do I need to do to you what is what is wrong what is the problem and she said you know this and that there is this situation and then he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing thy handmaid had nothing except a little cruise of oil and he said that's it he said go and borrow vessels verse 3 go and borrow vessels from all your neighbors he said borrow not a few borrow not a few if you increase capacity every oil assumes the shape of the container that holds it if i pour this water on the cover listen if i pour this water on the cover the cover will limit the water this makes this water look as though it is triangular pour it in a plate the plate will become like that are we together the anointing and then when she got it he now told her, i said go and close the door when the prophet was talking the anointing is a living thing it was hearing it was hearing the discussion and the moment she did that she began to pour the oil 
the oil began to multiply listen it's not enough to be anointed you must be anointed at a level that can command notable results it's not enough to be anointed the anointing is like currency the anointing is like currency hundred naira can buy sweet but hundred naira cannot buy shoe but it is still money so don't say i'm anointed the bible says acts chapter 10 right when paul was speaking in the house of cornelius the salvation of the jews in verse 38 he said how god anointed look at the extent to which god anointed jesus so it's not just that jesus was anointed look at the extent how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and then the bible says on the strength of that anointing he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil why for god was with him The anointing is not an instrument to shake and fall down and roll. No. Those are just effects of the anointing on the human body. And then alongside with other spiritual dynamics that happen at the point of impartation. But the proof that a man is anointed is not shaking. Results. Results. I don't care whether you shake like a leaf. Results, brothers and sisters. I just want to praise you. I lift my hands to say I love you You are everything to me And I exalt your Jesus are you the Messiah is it true that the anointing is on you and Jesus said all right watch this the blind eyes open the deaf ears here and he said go back and tell John how do you know a man who is anointed results results don't trivialize results it's not all about the results are you joking what then is it about results lives changed results hallelujah when there are miracles and signs and wonders and lives transform you speak to someone and just one prophetic word turns his life around you've had all kinds of testimonies here someone with jam result 140 something after prayer you come back 260 something how do you explain that it's the anointing a woman barren for eight years returns with triplets no cs how do you explain that results are we together results a whole family almost ravaged with hiv that cause and it's not by sleeping around and just one prayer and everyone is healed not just one person it's called results brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth you may be criticized but you will never be ignored once the anointing of the spirit is upon the life of a man upon the life of a business satan will raise criticisms why so that your word will not be heard so that you will not be believed and so that people will not be blessed but here's what the bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth the truth was buried only for three days after three days it came back to life results results notable results not just results it says the spirit of the lord please give us isaiah 61 the messianic prophecy it was a prophecy about jesus christ the spirit of the lord is upon me he says for he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free 
are we together and then he continues and he says to proclaim liberty to the captives and all of that to proclaim the year of vengeance of our God and all of that to comfort all those who mourn verse 3 and then he says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes that's what the anointing does beauty for ashes the oil of joy for the garment of praise right or oh, I'm, I'm the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness then he says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he through them might be glorified that they may be called oaks of righteousness brothers and sisters when a man comes to a ministry wretched terrible not born again and something happens to him it's called the anointing you get born again you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Your life is transformed. Your mindset is changed. You become a leader. You become an ambassador of the kingdom. Then you are now anointed again to reproduce sin. The anointing. There is nothing, one of our core values, as you know in this ministry, is the anointing. We believe in the anointing and we believe that anything that is done outside of spiritual empowerment is a waste of time. Absolutely. So you will see the technical department preparing as though they are prayer band. Because everything is done with respect to the anointing. They believe that the sounds are not just instruments of physics. They are spirit and life. Are we together? Listen. Please hear me. I do not boast to have risen so far. Compared to where I need to go, I am just starting. But I can tell you this. I have had the privilege of mentorship to clean upon the shoulders of those who represent the systems of God upon the earth. And this is what they have done. And this is what they do daily. The keys are finite. The keys are not infinite. But every one of them is important for the door to open. The keys to your destiny, they are not infinite. They are not so many. But each and every one of them must be there in place. It's like a code. Your passion for God. A transformed mind. Your gift and your abilities. And then the anointing of God upon you. No, no, no. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. It's my prayer that after this teaching someone will not just hear and say wow this was nice honestly when you see me talk like this I talk from my heart because this is it you know sometimes you can be looking for what you don't even know it is but when someone who has found it says look this is what you are looking for don't go around and waste your time and come back and say ah, ah I didn't know it was like this hallelujah Holy Spirit you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Make sure you talk to him when praying. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome to our lives and destinies. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait. Outside, you can come in. Clear the way for them so they can. I wait on you. Holy Spirit. 
You are welcome. I want you to sing the song. It's not a special number. Fill this temple with your power. That's what we need. The anointing upon our lives. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple. We wait on you. soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me this is my prayer Lord you are the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, take your place, take your place, take your place. with your destiny ah. I want you to mean business with your destiny don't worry about the rain there are people who will direct you strategically don't be distracted Nadao 
kakasunan ka Upang ichi ka isaya mo Na kimamasunan ka Upang ichi Hallelujah Prayer point number one Father, I declare that my mindset must change Lift your voice and pray Pray from the depth of your heart Shabarataka so diketele ba 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 Harato so segete barata la kora hasa bara bara Are you praying? Change my mindset. Change my mindset. Change my paradigm. to listen to me the quality of your life on earth is dependent on your level of mental transformation not every information is needed and useful for your destiny the fact that you are getting information does not mean you are growing the fact that you are learning new things does not mean you are rising the information you are getting must be needed and useful it must be needed and useful I like you to pray and say Lord the grace to edit everything that is not useful for my life and destiny lift your voice and pray the right knowledge the right information the right knowledge the right information hallelujah hallelujah it's raining but we're still praying hallelujah Apologize to some of those who are at the aisle outside. Sincerely apologize. Hallelujah. As much as possible, if they can find any place, even if it's just outside, let's see how we can help them. But regardless of what condition you are in now, let me tell you, it is profitable what you are doing. Because it will pay you more than money in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, what have you put in my life? that should bless my world reveal it reveal it to me lift your voice and pray Lord my gift 
Lord, the ability that you have put within me in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. There is an ability, 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 there is an ability within my spirit, there is an ability that can change my life, there is an ability that can change my environment. Hallelujah. 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 We're praying. The Bible says there is this treasure. The vessel containing it may be earthen, but the treasure is not earthen. It says there is this treasure in Joshua Selman. There is this treasure in Koinonia that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. I like you to say every gift you have put in me, Lord, bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Lift your voice and pray. Every hidden potential. Every hidden potential. I'm rising beyond recession. I'm rising beyond limitation. There is a gift in me. Embrace Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, not because you are tired of sitting down. He said, They that sat in darkness, the city of Nephtah and Zebulun, he said, They have seen a great light. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible says for darkness, confusion shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people. He said, but upon you, his glory shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles, hallelujah, Gentiles shall come. You will not look for them. Gentiles will come to your light. Gentiles will come. You will not publicize. There is an unction. There is a gift. There is an ability. Gentiles shall come to your light, bend their kings to the brightness of your rising. It say your gates shall be continually open. They will not be closed day or night to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Listen. I want you to lift your voice and cry and say all those who have been ordained to honor my gift, I call them into my life. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Everyone in every territory called, ordained, anointed. Everyone called to honor your gift. Your capacity, your education, your skill, everyone ordained of God, everyone ordained of God, everyone ordained of God to honor what you carry, call them for by the power of the prophetic, by the power of the prophetic. I call them, I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. 
destiny. In the name of Jesus, I command them to appear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me tell you what the Bible says. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And to him that seeketh, he will find. And to him that knocks, the door will be open. When you knock on that door, it will open, I assure you. I like us to pray. I like you to cry for a fresh anointing that will lift you higher. You are not down, but where you are is the limitation of the unction in ministry, in business. There is an oil. There is an unction. Thou anointest my head with oil. Lift your voice and pray for more. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Upon my life, fresh grace. Upon Koinonia, new levels, new dimensions of kingdom exploit. For the sake of His Majesty. Oh, upon my life, upon my life, I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be ordinary. There is a supernatural anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, taking me higher, taking me higher. The power of the Holy Ghost, a superior unction upon my life, a superior unction upon my business, a superior unction. Pray. Upon my marriage, a superior unction, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. It's raining, but hear me. I am a living testimony that when a man cries unto God, he can hear. The last two or three months have been phenomenal seasons of my life. Stepping into strange operations of graces and unctions. Testimonies beyond imagination. You can pray it through genuine desire. A heart that is thirsty. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, anoint me. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I'll take my life, breathe on me. of Solomon says because of the ointment so do the virgins love thee 
because of the ointment so realms you have never entered will come to you it's not just talking of women because of the ointment upon my head so do the virgins love thee they desire to be with you we are going to pray I want you to pray this prayer with all your heart you are going to challenge every door of limitation see let me tell you honestly if we are to be truthful with ourselves there are people you are not down but you are not up either you can move up when you are up you know you are there i like you to pray and say i challenge limitations you are a spirit and i speak to you in this season you are living lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray I challenge limitation over my life. I challenge limitations. I challenge limitations. Everything fighting my anointing, fighting my influence, fighting the glory of the Lord. Upon Koinonia, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. We come with the rod of a higher priesthood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray again. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. Multiplied grace. Influence means a platform. A platform that can afford you an opportunity to shape the minds of people. I like you to pray. We have been indoctrinated that influence is a bad thing. Without influence, the kingdom cannot advance. The key to kingdom advancement is not just evangelism, it's influence. The key, and I, if I be lifted up, not if I be talked about, I will draw all men. The capacity to stand at the front line of systems and legislate and be a communicator of the realities of Christ. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, every influence destined for me, I decree that the grace for it must come on me. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, desire it. Your heart is pure. Influence. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings, access to nobles, access to kings, access to men of influence, access to custodians of systems. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! One of the blessings. And the secret that is responsible for the ease in this ministry is unusual access, unusual influence. God has given us access to politicians, access to governmental figures, access to kings, access to financial people, access to mentors, access to voices that can advocate access to the credibility of men access to their willingness to let you leverage upon their success i want you to pray again
I'm a builder, I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room so that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure children of the most high and you will shine like the stars as you hold forth the word of life be competent be competent no room for laziness say amen so you must gain mastery mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do, that's what my Bible says. He said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional. To deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed. And have been graced. I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best, my very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active. When it comes upon a refined gift, when God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. 
Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming and I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself getting an exact blueprint of his assignment the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and then together his diligence and the anointing of the holy spirit the bible says he went about doing good became invincible and healing all that were oppressed of the devil he said, I have found David, my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David sins, but he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil, I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle, the architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you, when God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark. For the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. 
Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your play your own part. And tonight, grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, Ah, uh -uh. is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that, you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and i send you like the foxes of samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar i've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Koinonia as you cry upon him he grants you grace
Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence exceptional competence don't let any man preach you against competence incompetence will make you poor incompetence will make you angry incompetence will make you a failure incompetence will make you average I must stand out. I must stand out. In my generation, I must stand out. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray pray for grace to be outstanding lift your voice grace to be outstanding forget about the pain of today the bible says for our light afflictions which is what for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory pray while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change the closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. Praise the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart. 
inside and outside, no matter how far you are praying. Hallelujah. 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 Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto god tell the lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain Would you open The floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let it rain Open the floodgates of heaven hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. Your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. 
as you shout that name there will be all kinds of deliverances many of you you are standing in not just for yourself but for your family members all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for in the name of Jesus I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil every covenant every spell at the count of three let the fire of God separate those people right now one two three those devils I command those forces in the name of Jesus I cast out those devils bring them out the fire is falling on witchcraft outside the fire is falling every power that is not of God I send the rod of judgment every power that is not of God everyone standing upon this ground I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus Satan let God's people go there's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere there is no hiding place not for witchcraft there is no hiding place I command judgment let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains hallelujah I see a lot of chains lift your hands again I see chains so many chains break chains break break chains break. listen some of you this chains has lasted for years and decades i don't care how long it has been as you shout that name again i see many people outside you will know the chain has broken that embargo over your family you will know it when it happens because I hear sounds of change at the count of three shout that name again with all your might and I command that as they shout may those chains break one two three chains of stagnation chains. Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. 
I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Release the destinies of families. The destinies of families. We invoke the blood. That speak better things than the blood of Abraham. We invoke better the blood. That speak better things. Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what yes thou? Zechariah 1.18. It says, four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem so that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters and they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt and after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have I don't care what covenant you have in the name of Jesus therefore I speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of Jesus one, two, three go, 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 go out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood I cause you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now I compel you by the blood of Jesus of captivity. That blood opens that gate. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed, we open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! 
labor alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie, Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours, if it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let's know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother but upon the family and it's a prophetic call it's a prophetic call right it's not only your mother I didn't I'm, I'm, I don't know you people but the hand of God is going to come upon you it's a mighty anointing of the spirit it will come upon you are you part of the family huh? you are related you are what you are your own Okay, please, until I call you, but come, come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? Because the Lord is going to lift you. Why am I seeing a ring in your hand? I'm not seeing a physical ring, but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring. Your wedding bells are ringing. Are you married? Huh? This is what I'm... <laughs> I don't feel embarrassed. We are a family. Marriage is not a bad thing. Abi mommy, is it a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. Because there is nobody, and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen, my dear. You don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What, does, what, what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now. Because they have been talking about this woman. She sees and people have been saying she's fake. I'm saying, if this woman is fake, she will not enter this place. I guarantee you, except I'm not a man of God. Please, she's not fake. What she needs is, is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight, but the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken Hold hands, both of you. Mm. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together. 
is a healthy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of Jesus Christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the Lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the Lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ I break the embargo of darkness over the family come you're a great lady but the devil wants to oppress your life hold my hands just hold my hands mm, for he is here light shines in the darkness you must release her let her go now I'm seeing an old woman's face but in the name of Jesus I declare you step into strange dimensions of grace I command deliverance to you right now in the name of Jesus God bless you it's all right I bless this family the Lord changes your story you will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus name nay we I'm hearing a name of a place there is there's nay we I know it's an evil place right there is there is a there is somebody I, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place nay we who is that please if it's your case whether you are outside just make your way so that you don't waste our time please there are so many other people come mama she's your mother what's wrong with her is this working please help us she's having a problem with her legs she's having problem with her legs. knee problems her legs, oh. her legs. Her arthritis you don't know yeah. you I love god sleep. yes very well very well yeah very well well enough to marry a man of god yes because that's your husband he's a man of god thank you Jesus. i don't know how madam <laughs> see mommy laughing <laughs> mommy come what is wrong with her leg please let's let's not where it has been disturbing her for some time now Two years now. What, 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 what I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg. Fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry. It's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus? I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Lord. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My Come on, give it. I'm ready to break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly. The grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch them. your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. My children are 11 in number. 11? Yes. And I have six graduates. 
I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Let me talk. What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. Oh, we went for so many examinations. Now they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've the, left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cut the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the glory. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit. Upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs right now exercise the legs and let him start moving it go ahead the cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the holy spirit the lord visits you and brings to an end he brings to an end in the name of the lord jesus christ please call this mama this madam come he will answer you come Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come ma. Don't worry, God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this room. 
this is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the ways. You have made let me yours. Please bring out. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you, it will be a quick walk. Pastor Jackson, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do, especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen. All of you standing. I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray. Everyone I'd like you to connect. Because some of you shortly. You will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said if you can see me. Don't, don't be distracted. Please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request. Ushers, let's hurry up please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side. Please help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Father, hear the prayers of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh every cry every need Lord every pain Lord let things that look impossible by men we pray for a change in the name of Jesus we ask for the hand of God to come mighty Lord upon families let there be testimonies Lord unfolding testimonies we pray for the hand of God Lord to open doors that have been closed here at all we ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord. 
the tears of your people, Lord. The needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalataya, he said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands as your level changes. Lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level, by the weapon of the prophetic, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Mambro, do sekete balakata. Listen, this proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen, that proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics, in the name that is above all names, we send angels to every department of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down, may they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down, may they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of jesus the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage i cause fear 
from your life now I cause fear from your life now I cause fear I cause fear in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for you there are many who have been praying Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence there are people who have been crying I don't want to waste my time in destiny I pray for you that through a night vision mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you are you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now 
to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I pray for everyone called dull in this place. You understand but something happens to your mind. That ten times better anointing that distinguishes people. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I sense an anointing. One more time I pray that prayer. Whatever stops you from understanding. The Bible says and he opened their understanding. That they might understand the scriptures. I pray for you. May understanding be granted unto you. Hallelujah. Favor. The one factor that separates men. That favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now. May favor mantle you from now. In the name of Jesus, financial favor, marital favor, academic favor, favor in your job, favor in ministry. Hallelujah. Everyone who is confused about life, any aspect of life, I bring that confusion to an end now. I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In fact, I pray for you. Listen, not just physical barrenness, any area of your life. This is the year of the rain. And when rain falls, barrenness stops. Therefore, I command be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion in the name of Jesus. I command everything called dead in your life and your family. I don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the lord jesus i command resurrection right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you there are people who desire god you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter i pray for you may the angel of the lord's presence visit you you may not understand what I'm saying. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your gift. Your ability. Your skill. Whatever you are using that brings bread. Help her please. I pray for you. The works of your hands. Because you are determined to be diligent. You will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer. I put an anointing on your skill. I put an anointing. I put an anointing on your ability. I put an anointing on your gift. On your work. On your skill. May it begin to produce. In a supernatural dimension. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I just want to do an impartation. There are people who have come from different places. Please be sensitive. We are out of time. We will soon round up. But it's time to receive something. Listen. Listen, I told you there will be many impartations. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Are you hearing what I'm saying? no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help that please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen I want to pray 
as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside, wherever you are, you must not be in ministry like fivefold. Whatever area, many of you will begin to have dreams, encounters. Listen, many of you will step into healing graces. There's no time to move one by one. But I'm going, it's one of the major assignments God gave me tonight. Please believe it. You will argue it at your own detriment. There is a cheap route. The help of God is here to lift you. The help of God is here to take you. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I pray that in the next two minutes, let there be from the front to the back, outside, let there be strange impartations at the count of three. One, two, three. Let the wind blow right now. Receive it. Prophetic graces. Apostolic graces. Eprotosia. Dreams. Visions. Encounters. Dreams. Visions. Encounters. The word of knowledge. Gifts of the spirit. Let there be distributions. Right now. Right now. Right now. The gift of wisdom. The word of knowledge. The working of miracles. The gift of tongues. An interpretation of tongues. The gift of prophecy. Gifts of healing. Healing mantles. Receive it. Receive it. Leadership anointings. Leadership anointings. Leadership anointings. I impart it. Leadership anointings. Utterance, utterance, utterance. I release it to you. Utterance in the name of Jesus to communicate the things of the Spirit. Utterance, receive it. Utterance, I, I release upon you insight into scriptures, insight into the mysteries of the kingdom. I grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit, the mysteries of dominion, the mysteries of prosperity, the mysteries of impact. Hallelujah. The final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance zamatic alive lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus i release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and i declare these hands that are lifted like aaron like joshua lifted up the hands of his servant moses i command may those hands never go down may the lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and i pray for marriages supernaturally may god connect people supernaturally in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are i prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for jesus christ 
Or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus, but you found yourself dwindling. You have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let any man cajole you. Win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny. Wherever you are, please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here. I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you. Go ahead. Are there people like that? Go ahead. Don't look at any neighbor. Don't look at anyone. Wherever you are, inside or outside, don't pretend it. Jesus is calling you very quickly. Very quickly. Where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus? Inside or outside? Make your way to the front. Don't be ashamed. Please appreciate them coin on you as they come. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. No matter how far, rush and make your way. Young and old. God bless you. Keep coming. It's time to make it right. Don't play games with destiny. Jesus is calling you. Come and surrender everything. Totally and consciously. Totally and consciously. Please make way for them. Don't stop them. Make way for them. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. I salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out. Hallelujah. The prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem. I want you to pray from the depths of your heart. Lift your right hand and say after me. Passionately and truly. Say Lord Jesus. I love you. And I believe in you. I believe you died for me. You rose again for me. I surrender. Completely to you. Take charge of my life from today and forever. I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. And I receive eternal life into my spirit. Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. Change them. Transform their lives radically. I cause the power of sin from your life. And I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everything that keeps drawing you to sin, I curse it right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Please follow the ushers, the gentlemen with the jerseys. They will have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.